Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. I'm your host, Drew Manning. And I'm your co-host, Lynn Manning. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We are coming at you today from Park City, Utah. We're actually not in Hawaii. Bummer. I know, but it's beautiful here, too. It is beautiful out here, too. Today's episode, we have on an awesome guest, Natalie Hodson. She is a, a mother of two. She's a fitness blogger, very successful fitness blogger, mommy blogger. She has an incredible story. And in today's episode, you guys, we get in to a lot of interesting topics such as stretch skin, uh, her top three grocery shopping hacks. You guys, she talks a lot about balancing, you know, being a mom, having self-care, taking care of your kids, finding healthy habits for your whole family. She has a lot of great family tips. Yeah, when we talk about her viral Own It campaign, which helped her to get over to almost a half a million followers on social media. So she definitely knows what she's talking about. She is inspiring. But first, today's episode is brought to you guys by QuestNutrition.com. Of course, you guys know we love Quest. And by the way... Their new pumpkin pie flavor, Quest Bar, is to die for. So It is good. so like, good. <laughs> shut the front door, put this pumpkin pie in my pie hole, eat it right now. You guys, it's delicious. No, but seriously, delicious. It is delicious. And especially this time of year, it, pumpkin, there's pumpkin everything nowadays. There's pumpkin spice, cereal, and donuts, and anything you can think it's of. It's hard. I can't go to the store at this time yeah, with all the pumpkin. Exactly. Nips. But check them out, questnutrition.com. They have a slew of amazing flavors of their Quest bars. They have Quest protein chips, they have protein powder, and they're an amazing company. Our second sponsor is dollarworkoutclub.com. And you've heard us mention Dollar Workout Club in the past, but Dollar Workout Club basically in a nutshell is for $1 a week, you get access to five new at-home workout videos, five healthy recipe videos, and five motivational videos that are new every single week, and all you pay is just $1 per week. Yeah, and you guys, the workouts are great because they're done at all fitness level. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, anyone can do it. It's an amazing program. It's one that we've spent countless hours putting (laughs) together, so go check it out. Yep, and each workout is only 10 to 20 minutes long, and that's actually why we're here in Utah. We're actually filming it with Natalie and it's, we're super excited about this project. So check it out, dollarworkoutclub.com. But now let's get into the episode and let's go hang out with Natalie. Hey, Natalie, thank you so much for joining us today on the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. We're honored to have you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. We love you, Natalie. <laughs> That's oh, Lynn. I feel the same way. <laughs> yes, Natalie, we all love you. if you guys don't know, is basically my twin. <laughs> we do look alike. And we're, by seriously. alike, I mean sometimes we play pranks on people and pretend that we're the other person <laughs> and really screw with people's minds. Yeah. Especially if like, we have the same braid in our hair and our makeup's yeah. done the same way. It actually is kind of confusing and hard to tell us apart. Yeah. And so we will probably dominate this conversation because I love Natalie so much and she is one of the most inspiring women in the fitness industry and moms that you will ever meet. But Drew, we will let you ask some questions here and there. Are you guys done yet? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Talking about each other's hair and makeup. Okay. (laughs) So the first question I want to ask you, Natalie, is when people ask you what do you do, what what do you how do you answer that? If you're at a party and people are like, so Natalie, like what do you do? (laughs) Yeah, it's a funny question because um, I uh, graduated from college as a history major, so I never ever ever thought that I'd be involved in the health and fitness industry. And how I got started in the industry was really just by chance. Um, I had just had my son and I had gained a whole bunch of weight during my pregnancy and I really was just trying to get back how into it. How much weight? So I gained and lost 70 pounds with both of my pregnancies. Okay, so close to how much I gained with my food baby. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. And I mean, I came back after having him and I and I was about 15 pounds. My babies were both 10 pound babies. Whoa. And so I was 15 or 20 pounds lighter between the baby and all everything else you lose. But I still had 50 pounds of weight on my body and I don't lose... I, you know, the weight just doesn't come off of me. So I really, um, I had been a cross country and track runner in college, so I knew running, but I was having a really hard time. I didn't know very much about nutrition at all or about weightlifting or high intensity interval training, nothing really other than running. And so I found this, this little program on bodybuilding.com and it was a free 12 week trainer. And I remember being really scared because I had to lift weights and I couldn't run because I had to focus on building muscle. Yeah. Were you afraid that you were going to get bulky? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was afraid. It was just so different than anything I had ever done. I was afraid I was going to get bulky and I was afraid really my biggest fear actually was going to the gym and not and looking like an idiot and not knowing what I was supposed to do in the gym and being judged by all the fit people in the gym and um but it was this really cool program that it was free and it walked you through training and nutrition 
Whose program and was it? It was on bodybuilding.com. It was Jamie Eason's 12-week okay, yeah, yeah, trainer. Yeah, and her. Jamie is, if you guys don't follow her yet, she is one of the kindest, most down-to-earth, genuine people in the industry. And I consider her a good friend of mine. And without her program, I mean, this, my whole fitness journey maybe never would have happened. Yeah, I love following her on social media too. Mm-hmm. So um, I did the program and I had really good results. And bodybuilding.com featured my before and afters. And... I got all this Did attention you lose from all it. The 50 pounds? So not in the 12 weeks, okay. um, yeah. but I did definitely, I mean, I had lost quite a bit of weight from running, but I learned so much primarily about nutrition during that mm-hmm. program. And I went from being kind of soft and flabby to having actual tone and definition. And it was really cool to see my body transform like that. And so I, basically to keep this there's a long version and the short version i'll give you the short version (laughs) um you know i got a lot of attention from those before and afters and so i decided to start a web a blog where i just you know my passion is you know the workouts are fun but my passion really is in um cooking i really enjoy cooking and making up recipes and finding ways to make eating healthy actually taste good and finding ways that my whole family will eat that way and so i started a blog only sharing recipes And I remember at first, I didn't think anybody would even look at it. And really nobody did at the beginning, but I started getting some following. I really was using Pinterest a lot at the beginning to get a lot of traffic for my site. And now my website has just grown so much. It gets about a million page views a month. and it has turned into my full-time job. So now I offer training programs on my site and I have this whole fitness business and um, that all stemmed from this crazy, you know, trial, this 12 week thing. I thought, well, I'll do it. And if it doesn't mm-hmm. work, then I'll just go back to running. Yeah. And yeah. it really, I mean, Natalie so. makes it sounds like sound a little bit like luck, but once you know <laughs> Natalie and you've tried her amazing food and you've tried her killer programs and you just get to know her, you realize A part of it was awesome circumstance that, of course, her before and after got out. But she is an incredibly hardworking, talented, amazing fitness mama. So that's why she's so popular and everyone wants to follow her. So um, do you... (laughs) Uh, so going back to my question. Oh yeah, I didn't question. even answer your question. Do Sorry, you, no, I, I warned. Okay, so you guys listening. Thing when people ask no, you, I do. don't. Oh, I warned okay, Drew yeah. before we started. I said I tend to talk a lot, so if I don't answer your question, totally Drew, direct me. Um, no, I just say I am involved in the fitness industry and I do online personal training. That's pretty much my short answer okay, because gotcha. otherwise. That's pretty much all people want to know. And then if they have more questions, then I'll give them. No, that's but like you're, a really good answer because when people yeah. ask me, I just say, um, I post the food I eat online <laughs> and then I leave it at that and people look at me really strange. I'm like, no, really, I do. Well, that's all I do too, I guess. Then. Um, uh, no, but you, your story, goes, it's a lot more in depth, right? There's a lot more to it than, than just that. And I think I, I would love for people to hear part of it because before you got into the fitness industry, you were actually a really successful entrepreneur. Like, I was. Tell us a little bit about your Scentsy thing because yep. you, you were very successful at that yeah. and why you made the transition from being a very successful entrepreneur yep. and making pa- a lot of passive income to doing the fitness industry. Yeah. So um, my a little bit about our background, mm-hmm. my husband and I met in undergrad school and when uh, he, when we graduated, he got accepted to uh, grad school at Carnegie Mellon University. And um, we just believed in education so much that at the time we felt like, well, we're just, we really want to get our education. So we're going to go into to, to debt for that to happen. So long story short, we ended up having about $200,000 in student loan debt between a little Whoa. bit of, a little bit of undergrad, but mostly graduate. I mean, it was like $65,000 a year for him yeah. to attend grad school <laughs> there. And at the time, you know, we're just thinking, oh, he'll get a good job afterwards. It will be fine. But when you have $200,000 in student loan debt, you're paying almost $1,000 a month just in interest. So we were at this time in our life where I had just had a little baby and my husband did have a good job working for ExxonMobil, but it we lived in Washington, D.C., which was one of the most expensive places in the country to live. And we were just literally drowning in our debt. And so I remember one day my husband shared and came home and he said, look, I know you want to stay at home with our son, but we can't afford this. You need to go back to work. And I knew I could go back to work and make good money. I wasn't, it wasn't that I didn't feel I wasn't qualified, but because I had worked in sales before and I had always done well at whatever job I had Mm -hmm. had. Um, but 
I didn't want to put my son in daycare and where we lived, daycare was so expensive. And so my aunt worked in this direct sales company called Sensi, which is um, wickless candles, basically, mm-hmm. which is a warmer that has a little light bulb inside and it melts this wax. And I saw her be successful with this company and I thought, well, maybe I could try that. So I talked to Sheridan, my husband, and I said, look, I really want to stay home with my son. I want to try this thing. Let's give it six months. And if it doesn't work, I'll go back to work full time. And so it was so funny. He said, he said, okay, we can agree to do this, but every three months you're going to present to me like you would present to a board of directors and we're going to do a full PowerPoint presentation. And <laughs> like, and you guys know Sheridan. Did he make okay. you wear a business suit? Okay, no. Like, yes. we, oh my okay, gosh. We this know her so husband. Funny. So this is why it's so funny. And he is, he's amazing, you guys. He's amazing and he's so intelligent and he is so business minded. And so I literally can just imagine him. I, it's just funny because I can imagine him doing this and I can literally imagine Natalie walking in and like her yoga pants and him being like, um, excuse me, this is a board. <laughs> no, seriously. Like that's, that's exactly what would happen. So we had this tiny two bedroom apartment in Washington, D.C. We'd get the kids to, or my son. We only had one child at the time. We'd get my son to bed and then I'd come out into our tiny little flat living room and I would have this PowerPoint presentation and I would go through my projections and my financials and all this. And it was really cool because um, it really did help me set goals and I was, you know, I was really hardworking, but I was also lucky that with Sensi, I got in at a good time. I was able to build a huge downline of over 5,000 people and get just promoted in that company Mm -hmm. um, very, very quickly. So I moved to the top leadership position in that company within about two years, two and a half years, I think. And um, it was it was good income. It was yeah. a great income. And I love the company. The owners of the company are amazing people. Um, but it just wasn't something I was super passionate about. I was passionate about helping other, like the other women I worked with in the mm-hmm. in the business. I loved helping them. But you know, making your house smell good, wax and warmers. It wasn't just. I was gonna say you weren't passionate about candles. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're well, more passionate about like how the yeah. yeah, and like I'm not into like decorating and decor. Like if you came to my house right now, you'd be like, whoa, is this a dude's bachelor pad? Like I'm not good at decorating. <laughs> and so you know, and and anyway, so then I fell into the fitness industry, and I realized I had a passion for it, and I realized you know our biz, my husband's business, my and he said, if you want, like, we can see, we have vision here that we can turn this into a full-time business, um, but you need to decide. Because I knew I couldn't do both. I just didn't have the time. I and mean, I still was a stay-at-home mom. My son wasn't in kindergarten or anything, so he was home with me all day. So um, that's when I decided to step away from my um from my Sensi business, I kind of transitioned with another leader in my downline and um, Mm -hmm. used the income that I was getting from that to help launch my fitness business until my fitness business was doing better than I had been with my Mm -hmm. Sensi business, which was doing quite well as well. So Yeah, no, that's that's an awesome story. I think it's really powerful to see that you should follow your dreams, something you're passionate about. Even though you're making money, mm-hmm. you know, doing network marketing, which is a great way to make passive income. Yeah, and it People was think good. that's the key to happiness, but in your situation, it's like, that I'm not passionate about that. Yeah, and it know? was good income too. Yeah. I mean, I was making very, very good money. Um, so it wasn't, for me, it wasn't so much about the money. It was that mm-hmm. I wanted something that was mine, that I could create myself, and that I was really passionate about. And at the core of both of them, it's funny, it's helping people. I mean, yeah. that's what I loved about both of them. And so it's just, you know, I always say this to people all the time that, I mean, you can get a meal plan or a workout program from anybody. But what I really find a lot of pride and passion in is really working and helping people see their full potential Mm -hmm. and work past kind of the mental barriers that we all struggle with when it comes to health and fitness. So Yeah. Yeah. And as a mother myself, I really loved when I found you and started following you and we became friends because, you know... It's really hard sometimes in this industry to find women that have had children that live a balanced lifestyle and that promote, you know, just loving your body and a healthy balance, you know, because as a mom, it's hard to balance everything. And I look at you, you had two kids, they were both 10 pound babies (laughs) and you gained and lost 70 pounds Mm -hmm. with each kid. And man, I mean, that just blows me away, even though I've had two kids, you know, just seeing that and hearing your perspective, like what do you tell people as far as like motivation? You know, a lot of women coming out of that, like you said, having 50 pounds to lose and you did that twice. You know, what do you say on how to get the motivation after kids to focus on you and get healthy? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think it was different with each with each baby. So the after my first baby, I honestly did not know that I was gonna come home from 
having a child looking six months pregnant still. Like nobody warned me about that. So I remember coming home and looking in the mirror and being like hating myself because I was like, I'm not supposed to look pregnant still. What's going on? And I remember looking into belly binders and all these things. And, um, you know, I was really hard on myself after my first pregnancy and it wasn't healthy. It came from almost a place of hatred towards my body. And I was snappy and I was cranky and I wasn't in a good place. And um, what happened is I started focusing more on exercise as a form of self-care instead of coming from a place of, oh, I just need to look better and lose the weight. Because I found that, for example, like my husband worked crazy hours at ExxonMobil, like 80, 90 hours a week. And so there would be some days where I would be five, six o'clock and the baby would be screaming and I was by myself. We had no family out there. And I was like at mommy burnout mode, right? And I and I remember a couple times just putting my son in the stroller and walking around our apartment complex because that was the only way I could calm him down. And I started to recognize that when I got outside and got a little bit of exercise and could connect with nature in that way, that I was happier. I would come home and like, yes, my son would also stop crying. So that made me happier. Mm-hmm. But I realized that spending a little bit of time on myself um, and in, you know, in my case, it was exercise. It made me feel feel better about myself. And when I was eating like whole nutritious foods, I felt happier and I felt better because I was fueling my body with the proper foods. And I didn't even know anything about nutrition then, but I knew that when I was eating whole foods, I felt better. So with, with my son, it was more, um, like I really started to, to recognize those signs that if I spent just, you know, and it's hard because as moms, we really kind of feel guilty about taking a little bit of time for ourselves. But I learned that if I just spent like 10, 20, 30 minutes on myself every single day, I was happier to be around. And I was a better mom because I wasn't so snappy and I didn't feel so burnt out all the time. So I kind of learned that as I was, um, as I was, you know, after I had my son and then after, when I had my daughter, I thought, oh, I'm going to have this wonderful pregnancy. I'm not going to gain all the weight I did like the first pregnancy. And, you know, I just gain weight with my pregnancies. I mean, I still was active and I didn't eat a bunch of junk food. My body just gains a lot of weight when I'm pregnant. So I kind of love that though. You know, I don't know what, like it is frustrating as a woman when you get pregnant and you hear from a million people this way and that how much weight you should or shouldn't gain and what you should or shouldn't be be doing and if you are or aren't being healthy and it's hard we need to back each other up as moms you know and so i love that even though you did everything right you know yeah your body still gained a good amount of weight mm-hmm. yeah which it, is good because how much weight did you gain then in your pregnancies we're not talking about it. <laughs> but you know what it's okay yeah. too for women to know that you don't have to gain a lot of weight to have this amazing story yeah. i mean you had definitely like high risk issues like lots of other things that i have never had to she gained you know, 18 pounds by the way. so <laughs> which is yeah. i also was on bed rest for like three months so yeah. let's not talk about I know. horrible <laughs> pregnancy women no going along with that women need to be together instead of saying i gain 70 pounds you gain 80 pounds i hate you right like you don't understand how hard it was right but we all have yeah, our own uh, yeah. and we just I'm need just to support to each other and over yeah. here unite oh. you know <laughs> we love you Drew. sorry we detracted natalie so you're going back no, to your okay. daughter okay so, so after my daughter i i still gained all that weight and you know it was such a different process for me one because i understood new training and nutrition so much more so i knew that i had the tools that i needed to lose the weight but two i was in such a different place mentally um and i remember i literally remember saying to myself over and over and over it's not a race it's not a race it's not a race. And I think because of that, it took the pressure off of me to do anything crazy and extreme, which because I knew from my own experience that that would just lead me to not stick to it and fail and feel like a failure. Um, so I followed my midwife's recommendations. I didn't do any exercise for six weeks. I remember trying to do one push up at the six week mark and I couldn't even do one push up. I remember falling flat on my face. And I didn't have money for weight. So I remember using things around the house. Like I used a banana instead of a medicine ball. Or not a banana. What am I saying? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. What we love about that is we work out together. And I use a banana. I, I, a feel, like, I feel like this is more That's appropriate true. than you think because we have used a banana in our workout. We have. Natalie actually smashed it. I was completely. trying to jump over okay. it and I, st- and I couldn't. I so in your defense, Natalie, yeah. Yeah. we have used bananas. So, so I actually meant to say a pineapple because... Oh. Oh, yeah. weighed like five pounds and I used that and anyways 
And I just learned these little tricks. And I think the difference was that I was, I was a lot kinder to myself in the process. And, um, second hand, you know, a second thing, which we can talk about in a minute, but is that I really started, I, I got frustrated after I had my daughter because I had lots of things that I felt nobody talked about. Like I was, I had all this stretch skin and I had all these stretch marks and I thought every, I know other moms are dealing with this, but nobody talks about it. And on my blog, I started um, opening up and sharing and talking about a lot of those things. And so I think that helped me because as I started to talk about my story, um, it made me feel less ashamed of those things. And it made me feel comfortable, you know, in my journey and in the process and, you know, and in, I guess the weight loss as well. So, and I love that. I mean, so much stuff that I love about that, but I really love it because I feel like I give women that same advice. And sometimes our advice, Natalie's advice, or how I replicate this advice, doesn't sound very sexy. You know, it doesn't sound as cool and sexy to be like, you know what, it's just gonna take time and you need to love yourself and you need to just tell yourself every day you're doing the best you can. And it could take months or even a year or even two years to get back Mm -hmm. um, to the same body weight that you were before your pregnancy. And I know that a lot of times we see so many things that are gimmicky and salesy and, you know, 30 day, you know, overnight transformations or take these pills for three months and, you know, you'll never be more fit. But the truth is, is it's taking the time for yourself. It is those consistent, you know, healthy habits and it's being kind to yourself. That's going to get you where you want to be, not only physically, but more important, emotionally and mentally. So I love that you do that. And I love your own it campaign. Mm -hmm. You touched on it at the end of your answer talking about how, for those of you who don't know, look at the hashtag own it. <laughs> and Natalie talked about those hard issues. She showed this amazing video. Um, if you don't, and if you haven't seen Natalie's pictures, you need to, okay? This girl has abs. Okay? Oh, I'm talking about like abs, <laughs> like you could wash your clothes on these abs. <laughs> I have ab envy of Natalie. Um, she's amazing, but like she's showing her abs, but then she's showing like she has loose skin from her pregnancies. And that's not going away. So talking about your own campaign, you know, did you have ever have big insecurities about your loose skin or other things to do with pregnancy, you know, and how did you overcome that? And how do you teach women to embrace their bodies? Yeah, they are before. So before you answer that, I just want to tell people this own it campaign, this thing that that Natalie did went completely viral online, like it went viral even Heidi Powell featured it on her blog. Mm-hmm. But um, can you talk about the numbers too of how viral it went? Do you remember? Yeah, it got seen by over uh, like 50 million people on Facebook. And it was, gosh, I don't remember all the numbers off the top of my okay. head. But it was, I mean, I it just blew <laughs> yeah, everything out. And it so took my Facebook following from, I think I had like 100,000 at the time. And it bumped it to like 200,000 in a month, I think, yeah. or something. I mean, it really yeah. grew a lot at that point at that time. And... Um, so you asked me a couple questions there and, um, I'll try and answer each one. When I first made that video, it was very candid and it was very in the moment. And what had happened is I went to an expo and I was there for a company called MRM that I work for. And there were people in line that had come to meet me that followed my, my blog and my website. And one of the girls came up to me and she said, how, you know, I know you had big babies. Don't, don't you have stretch skin too? Like what, what do you do about the stretch marks? And I just looked at her and I'm like, yeah, I have it too. But I realized that in all the pictures that I posted, I was like standing up tall and my, let me clarify. I don't Photoshop my photos, but when I stand up tall, you can't really notice the stretch skin as much. And I've never posted a picture, you know, when I'm bending over, when I'm sitting down and all, and I, what I see my perception And so I came home and I I thought about that a lot. I couldn't get her comments out of my head. And so I just pulled out my camera and I made this very candid uh, video. And I said, look, I just want you guys to know that I I have stretched skin too. And when you stand up, you can't see it. But when you bend over, you can see it. And I just talked a lot about how we, you know, my thing is stretched skin, but we all have things in our life that we might want to change, but we can't. Maybe you have a big nose or maybe you have short legs or whatever, these insecurities. And, you know, when you can, when you stop focusing on the areas that you're insecure about and that you, you really cannot change. I mean, I can't change my stretch skin. 
unless I want to have surgery. You can't change a big nose unless you want to have surgery, right? Unless you want to do something really drastic. And so I, in the Own It campaign, what I encourage people to do is to focus on the things that they do have the ability to change. So I, you know, would focus on, you know, I do have the ability to lift weights and get nice toned arms or um, to eat healthy and nutritious food or to set, you know, realistic small goals every single day. And so that's kind of how the Own It campaign started. And then it really... Um, I saw with my own eyes that when I was, and I was scared, like, let me tell you, when I first posted that, I remember my hands were shaking and I sat in front of the computer for a good 30 minutes before I had the courage to hit post because I knew a lot of people were going to see it. And, um, I, once I finally hit it, it was crazy. It was instantly all the comments started coming in like, oh my gosh, I struggle with that too. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I realized that when I felt scared, it was because I felt vulnerable, but that that is where we connect with each other is when we are open and willing to be vulnerable and that vulnerability isn't a sign of weakness, but that it's a sign of strength. And I saw that, you know, I, I actually saw that and I felt it and I understood it so much more as opposed to reading that in a book. And so then the Own It campaign grew and I started opening up about other things in my life um, that I was very scared to talk about before. I mean, never, ever, ever publicly had I talked about some of these things. Like um, when I was growing up, my mom was in and out of prison and that really affected me. Um, Growing up, I was very ashamed and embarrassed of it. I never talked to anybody, you know, in pictures, like when she wasn't at my wedding or whatever, I would just say, oh, she couldn't make that picture. And I was very, and so once I opened up about that, um, it, twofold, two things happened. One, people started relating to me a lot more, just like with the stretch skin stuff. But two, um, once I owned my story, I wasn't ashamed by it anymore. I didn't associate that shame and that guilt and that fear with that instance in my life. Instead, I just owned it and accepted it and um, was able to move past it. So from there, I started, I, I told people, I said, this was such a powerful experience for me. I want you guys to have this and I want to feature your own own it stories. And it doesn't have to be about body image. It can be about anything in your life. It can be about, um, an, you know, an experience you've overcome. And it was amazing. I mean, the stories we got and are still getting like women who, there was one woman who had been hit by a car and had scar. She, she had scars all over her body from all the surgeries that she had gone through and had gotten past the body image issues from all of her scars. And wow. we, we had, you know, um, women who'd been abused or other women who'd been neglected. And it was so powerful to read other people's stories and to know, wow, I am not alone. I felt that exact same way. And I'm not alone. Like we all deal with these issues. And yeah. so that's where, you know, and then that's when Heidi Powell and I connected and I helped her with her perfectly imperfect campaign. And I again, talked about the stretch skin and other areas that I'm kind of insecure about. And I talked about how you can build your own self-confidence by focusing on goal setting. And for me, um, you know, setting small, realistic goals every single day was a game changer for me because it allowed me to build my own self-confidence by proving to myself that I can say, I'm going to do something and then actually do it. And so for me, that happened by setting tiny, like micro goals, like tiny, like park in the back of the parking lot when you go to the grocery store or drink a glass of water when you wake up. And eventually those goals would get bigger. But for me, um, that was how I kind of got past that negative self-talk was by, you know, just setting those tiny micro goals. Man. And I, I mean, I love that whole movement. I love the whole campaign. Like you said, Every woman can relate with it. I mean, whether it's stuff, I mean, there's always been stuff from the time I was a child that I wish I could have changed or after I had kids and I have, you know, I have stretch marks and yeah, people don't always talk about it. And it's not like I take pictures and be like, Hey, look at my stretch marks. Like it's insecurities of things, you know, that we think, Oh, we wish we had that woman's body or whatnot. And I love that campaign. And when I saw that, it was just a reminder to me you know, to not focus on all the, you know, all the things that we're insecure about, you know, instead of focus on our strengths and our abilities and how we all are beautiful. And I also love that you did it as a campaign and as a group with all these women, because I feel like it's so powerful when as women, we come together and unite in the sisterhood and really uplift one another and support one another and encourage one another and point out each other's strengths. Like, yep. it's just so powerful. 
I agree. And I will say there were a few hateful and mean comments. Like people said, oh, you have mommy issues or, oh, you know, who are you to complain? You don't look that bad. And, you know, people, a lot of people in the pick. And at first, when those first started coming in, it would bother me. And now I've gotten to the point where I just have accepted that usually when people comment and and say mean comments, it's more of a reflection of something that they're struggling with inside. And it's so much less about what they actually wrote about me. So those comments I pretty much just brush off my shoulders and and really they're far and few in between yeah. but yeah, yeah. Well, you know we can totally relate to those yeah. <laughs> yeah. those comments yeah. you yeah. know with my whole fit to fit to fit journey most of it was positive but there's a few naysayers and, and haters out there but no I think that a lot of the stuff you said although you are a woman and and is is very prominent in, in among women mm-hmm. it can apply to men because men are insecure too yeah. people don't realize what? that men yes <laughs> I'm <just kidding>. well <laughs> I'm totally kidding. no but we don't like to admit it but we are insecure but and that's the thing is like i know so many men that you know think they're going to be happy when they get the six pack or they get the physique model body but that's not where happiness comes from you know it it doesn't and unfortunately for men like they look at you know these magazines and these other models and like oh man i wish i had that but they don't talk about it as much as women do um or even if it's not body image stuff like for men the number one shame trigger in men is feeling like they're inadequate or they're they're not providing enough and so it could be you know work it could be feeling like you're not doing good enough at work or that your wife you know doesn't feel like you're providing for the family or whatever i mean there's a lot everybody that's the thing right we all have our own issues and it's maybe it's in this area or that but the feeling of inadequacy, the feeling of shame, it's all the same. And so when you can own that and share and connect with other people, then you can be stronger collectively as a group. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I guess what I was trying to say is that it's harder for men to be vulnerable because mm-hmm. we're men and our society puts them up as, well, if you're vulnerable, you're more like a woman, you know? <laughs> but in, 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 in my own experience, being vulnerable is a strength. Whereas when I was growing up, it's looked at as a weakness. You don't yeah. talk about these things. You don't talk about your weaknesses. You keep it in. Which you know? to me is always but. so silly because <laughs> ladies listening to this are like, we always think vulnerability is sexy. I mean, I every know. woman I know is like, I want a guy to be sweet and vulnerable. And then men are over here being like, it's such wussiness to be vulnerable. And I'm like, you know what? Listen to the women. We're always right. But we I told a, you it was good. A real, I thought That's women cute. liked a six pack and big <laughs> muscles. No? Man, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Vulnerability, okay. oh, oh, <laughs> doing the dishes. Yeah. Telling us we look nice, buying us chocolate with our shirts off. It's though, really, right? it's really. <laughs> hey, we want both. No, I'm just just kidding. Kidding. I mean, we want it all. <laughs> We're women. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Getting back to a few things because yep. recently you've been uh, featured on um, uh, Dave Ramsey's. Yeah, his daughter has his, his daughter, Rachel, yes, Cruz. Rachel Cruz. They co wrote a book together called Smart Money, Smart Kids. And yes. they heard about our story about how we had been in $200,000 in debt and gotten out of debt using his program. So, by the way, if you have not heard of Dave Ramsey, <laughs> you need to go check him out right now because his program is wonderful for getting. I think they're the number three podcast in the country. Yeah. And he just is a funny guy that says funny stuff all the time, but he has an amazing plan for getting people out of debt. So, we followed his program. And um, they had heard about that. And so they reached out to me and they said, hey, you and Rachel have similar audiences and we, we really like the way, you know, what you're about. And we would like to fly you out to Nashville and have you film some video logs with Rachel. And so that was about two months ago when we did that. And it was so much fun. We, um, we got to do a lot of fun things, but we, I was able to share with Rachel some tips for eating healthy while staying on a budget. And she gives a lot of tips like shop on the you know, the outside of the grocery store and those kinds of things, but they wanted like real, actual, tangible tips. So, um, I love it. Yeah. Give me these Yeah. What were your your (laughs) grocery shopping hacks? Because not all women go grocery shopping. I do the grocery shopping. So Mm -hmm. I got my uh, pen and paper here. Okay. Good. What are your tips? So (laughs) one tip that I love is that I will fully admit I am a spice addict, okay? Like, it's bad. If you go in my kitchen and you open drawers and you're like, there's more spices in here. Um, because I, when, when I was trying to lose weight, I learned that to add a lot of flavor to food, before I used to always add mayonnaise and, you know, ranch dressing and heavy condiments. And I learned that to, to get similar flavors without all the calories, you can play around in the kitchen, experiment with spices. So I have all these spices. So in that process, I learned that if you go to the, like, uh, like there's usually a, 
a Hispanic aisle in your grocery store or a ethnic ethnic food aisle, mm-hmm. you can find literally the exact same spices that you would buy in the baking section, like the McCormick brand. You will find uh, international spices. They're the exact same spices for a fraction of the price. So mm. let's really? say you buy, yes. So oh, like, hey, okay. now it probably, the label will probably not be in English, but I promise you it tastes <laughs> exactly fine. the same. It looks like it looks pepper. Yeah. So I know. So, but you would normally never think, oh, I'm not going to go look by the Thai food for basil. But like, if you go buy a thing of basil, you know, a normal size spice container, it's probably three or four bucks. And I'm just throwing basil out there. I mean, any spice, but you go in the, uh, in the like ethnic food aisle and you're probably gonna pay 75 cents whoa yeah. that's crazy so okay. it's a lot that's cheaper fine. so that's one i'm going to the store tomorrow just to check this out okay <laughs> lynn's gonna go grocery shopping <laughs> I, I i i'm not allowed to go grocery shopping because she i comes like, back with, like things cereal like cereal and, and oreos that's don't why talk, i do don't all talk the about it shop. let's not talk about it <laughs> uh, by the way that is so cool i think that you drew do, do the, the grocery, grocery shopping, shopping and cooking and he but cooks. she does the finances that's true so. it's cool. and the cleaning yeah and anything else that's like actually but you guys <laughs> no you guys have a good balance though um okay so, so another hack is okay so brown rice is super cheap um i mean you can buy a pound of brown rice for a dollar at almost any grocery store usually we get it at walmart but rice i am telling you rice the rice aisle is confusing you can walk down the rice aisle and it's like there's instant rice there's ben's rice there's you know (laughs) cajun rice there's rice with onions there's like all these rice options and it can be really confusing so what i always tell people is you know the fancy rice is going to be like seven dollars for maybe half a pound but if you just go to the bot usually it's the bottom row in the grocery store because it's the cheapest and you can find a bag of brown rice for 99 cents and then what you do is instead of cooking it in water like the direction suggests go get a can of beef broth and boil the rice in beef broth or you can use chicken broth or vegetarian broth whatever and um, cook it that way. And it adds a really good flavor to your rice. So you don't need to add a lot of other things. And I it almost, I tell people this, I mean, it doesn't really taste like this, so don't get your hopes up. But if you cook brown rice and beef broth, it almost tastes like healthy beef ramen, kind of. <laughs> like, not like, really. No, this. Uh, this is just like a small, maybe. Yeah. maybe a but you kind of get the flavor. Um, and there's also this paste called uh, better than bouillon and that's pretty good too so it sounds tasty and so you're gonna save a bunch of money by by cooking your rice that way and um one thing i was joking with so dave ramsey's thing is always until you get out of debt you better live on beans and rice rice and beans yep, and so <laughs> yeah and, and he always says you better not see the inside of the kitchen unless you're washing the dishes you know he has all these funny <laughs> phrases so when i was there i gave that tip and i said so we're changing the slogan from beans and rice with beef broth and or i don't remember how we said it but i rice totally with beef broth. yeah there you go yeah. it was funny i like it um and then the last thing i said is that potatoes are really inexpensive you can usually get a five pound bag of potatoes for a couple dollars mm-hmm. and um what we like to do in fact we've been doing this so i you guys mm-hmm. listening you may not know this but lynn drew and i are sitting all here together right now um, Real close we're here right in park now. city utah <laughs> we are and so yeah. we've been um eating meals together and a lot of times what i like to do is is mix multiple different kinds of potatoes together so i might take mm-hmm. one sweet potato one yam and one rest you know regular potato um and cut them up and roast them with a little bit of olive oil salt pepper garlic powder and that is an inexpensive carb source for you so potatoes are very inexpensive and then i like to kind of mix them with some red potatoes and sweet potatoes at the same time you guys and they're delicious and actually almost every health professional talks about you know when people are on their weight loss journey that pro that potatoes are an amazing healthier source of carbohydrates compared to a -hmm. lot of other forms of carbohydrates well some people freak out because like oh it's a starchy carb so it's gonna make me fat but here's the thing when i you know if you're exercising enough you you don't it's not something you need to worry about so much it's an excellent carb source and the reason is because it's nutrient dense yep it has a lot of phytonutrients that are really good for your body so if we look at food as just carbs proteins and fats like macronutrients then we justify okay well this soda is a carb and this twinkie is a carb and this donut is a carb but really you know, you're starting to lose out on, you know, nutrient dense foods. Yep. And I think potatoes are a great source of carbohydrates. And opinion. they're delicious. And we I had some only, tonight, by the way. Yeah. I had a lot of them. <laughs> we we did. all actually ate them today. They're so delicious. We probably okay. each ate 
at least two potatoes, at least. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? Yeah. So Maybe good. even three. So, so. good. That's okay, good. before Lynn gets into some of her <laughs> lightning round questions that she does yeah. all the time, yeah. uh, I, I want to ask you a couple you know, generic questions that yeah. I get asked a lot, and yeah. I just want to, I'm curious to hear your answer. Um, so, obviously, I think a lot of our followers are, you know, have families or have a spouse, and they, they would be interested in knowing your answer to these questions. Um, what what's your what what do you tell people when they ask you what do you do when your spouse isn't on board with mm-hmm. you trying to be healthy and they're not really sabotaging you but wishing you weren't trying to be healthy because they want to quote unquote enjoy life yeah what what do you tell those people oh yeah. man that's such a good question we get yeah. this all the time yeah, yeah it's a great question and I could talk forever on it but I'll keep it short really what I have found with my own experience and with the people that I've worked with is that there's a couple of factors that that lie in there one usually your spouse doesn't want to be pushed into something and told what to do. So a lot of times, let's say you read this article online or you find out about this cool new company called, you know, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And you're super excited. So you come and so you're motivated to eat healthy and to work out and you come home and you have to remember your spouse didn't read all those articles that you read or watch those motivating videos. And so they're just living their normal life and you come home and you're like, I'm going to make all these changes and they get frustrated because they feel like, whoa, 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 I didn't have any say in this and I don't want to make these changes with you. And so one, you have to kind of be aware of the language that you use when you talk to your spouse um, and be considerate that, you know, they might not be at the same point you are. And then two, um, I've also learned that a lot of times, a lot of times people are just afraid that you're going to change and that they're going to be stuck you know, in the same place they were at, which is where they want to stay and that you're going to change into this new person. And so sometimes you just need some, some reassurance. Um, especially I know like me talking to my husband, a lot of times that's the same way women talking to men, you just need to reassure them that you're not going to totally change as a person. Like fundamentally, you're still the same person. You just want to get healthier. Um, and then that conversation can lead to talking about the reasons why you want to get healthier with them. So maybe, you know, Tell them about an experience, like talk about your kids. For most people, if you have kids, talking about being there for them when they get older is an emotional trigger for most people that can be a catalyst for change. And so I always, you know, like here's an example. Let's say, let's use this for an example, right? Let's say you go on a family hiking trip and if you hadn't neglected your health for 10, 20, 30 years, and let's say your kids and everybody wants to go for a hike, but because you've neglected your your health, you need to stay at base camp and maybe prepare, prepare dinner. It's a total, like you can get back and everybody can get back from the hike and you can hear about it, but like that's a totally different experience than like actually getting to go and, and see everything that they got to see. And so, you know, like sharing those kinds of stories or talking about maybe a personal experience, like if you had a, a father or grandfather who maybe had cancer or heart disease or dealt with diabetes and you had to see them give insulin like share those stories and share those emotional reasons why you want to make these changes um and then just be aware of the language you use you know when you're talking to somebody don't chastise them um like if they're eating ice cream don't be like oh you're gonna eat ice cream again or oh (laughs) you really skipped your workout today because what's gonna happen is that's just gonna pull you farther apart that's gonna make them feel uh, um, ashamed, attacked. attacked, and they're that's like then that's going to make them not want to help you and not want to accomplish your goals. And so what I found is just having kind communication can make a big difference. And just say, look, this is where I'm coming from. This is why I want to make these changes. And I would love it if you could support me. You know, as I'm as I'm on this health journey. And then explain like if you have a hard time. For example, I have a hard time if there's certain foods in the house. I have zero willpower. <laughs> and so I have just talked to my husband and I said, look, I just want you to know it's really really hard for me to, um, you know, stick with my healthy eating when these certain things are in the house. And you know that I'm happier when I can eat right and when I can exercise. And so if you want a happy wife, (laughs) leave these things out of the house. No, but you know, I think, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And trust me, like, I know I'm kind of making it sound like it's been this perfect road. It absolutely has not been. We have had bad times and good times and we've learned and grown together. Um, and it's been a major, I guess the main thing you just have to remind yourself is that things are not going to change overnight and it's going to be a process and you're going to learn to find your new normal and what works for your best friend may not work exactly the same for you and what works for me may not work exactly the same but you need to experiment and try you know and just try to work together yeah Yeah. i think you know going back to my fit to fat to fit journey i think if you know if lynn wasn't on board with me eating healthy and she was just you know eating her normal unhealthy ways um, <laughs> Wait, I, I love that Drew's like, and if she would have been eating her old, 
normal, <laughs> unhealthy way. Yes. Can um, you put in? Can, it let's put been, in show notes. Drew throws Lynn under the bus again. Um, <laughs> that like is every single show, does, right? Every episode. It's, that's how we stay consistent. Oh, um, no, um, it would have been so much harder, I think, if she yeah. was not on board with eating healthy with me. And so I don't have a personal experience from that. So when people ask me, I'm like, you know what? I I, I can't give you my own personal experience, but in some ways I can because. Well, sometimes when I try and get Lynn to like exercise with me or correct her form, oh my gosh, it causes conflict. Not even and I'm like, about why don't you want to do this? Why don't you want to go work out? Like, what's wrong with you? You want to sit here and watch movies? Let's go work out. Um, oh, and so I can kind of relate. Ever. In some ways, when you try and push on them, they get defensive, especially yeah. when it's coming from their spouse. Yep. They need to receive their outside motivation. And kind of like the, in the example where like you went to a seminar and you got super motivated, they didn't have that experience. Yeah. They need to have that at some point, but it's not going to come from their spouse. Yep. No matter how motivating you are, if it's coming from the spouse, <laughs> it doesn't matter. The spouse is always wrong. But when they hear the same thing from a friend or someone else, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, that makes sense. I think I could do that. <laughs> okay. I am throwing my two cents in here just because okay. this is the most common question that I've gotten from – because I only work with women since I'm a woman's fitness specialist. And I get this from female clients all the time. And it is funny to me because – this approach that I'm going to share with you guys, so far, every client has come back to me and been like, oh my gosh, it totally worked. So not to toot my own horn or anything, but I think it's good, solid advice. So it's very much in line with what Natalie said as far as people, like a lot of it is insecurity, like the other spouse thinking, you know, you're going to try to control them or maybe you want to change them or, you know, you're going to change and leave them or you're going to change and things will be different. And so I always tell them, you know, what's really interesting, like your spouse or if it's a friend or a family member, I'm like, they really love you. They love you a lot of times more than themselves because people are really hard on themselves. And a lot of times if they're in an unhealthy condition and if they're overweight and struggling, they don't really believe in themselves and they're kind of scared like you're going to leave me behind and I can't do it. But if you make it about you, then their attitude changes. So I just tell them, hey, try this approach. Go to them and be like, you know what, you guys? You just like say to your spouse, "I, I don't think I can do this. You know, I really want to change my lifestyle. I really want to be healthier. I want to do this for our kids and so I can be a better wife or, you know, whatever. And be like, and you know what? Like, I'm scared. I'm scared to do this on my own. I don't know if I can do it. And I don't know. Do you think that you could help me? Do you think you can? I I don't really know if I believe in myself. Can you help me do this? Could you come along with me? And every time they've said their spouse, do 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 the man on the white horse, he sees a problem, he sees you suffering, and he's like, I can help you do this. Yes. And it's almost like they rescue you. Men love that. They want to come to your aid. They want to help you. They want to rescue you. They want you to feel good. They love you. You know, but, and when they come in from that approach, they feel like this was their idea they're doing the work to help you and literally every time i don't know if i've released the secret now it's not going to work but every time they've been like no way it totally worked i can never get him to do it before and now he feels like he's rescuing me and he's researching and bringing home all these ideas like you know babe this is really what we should do now because i heard this was healthier and they can't believe it that's it's awesome. kind of like so, Inception. You're planting your DNA in their brain. You're going like level three. It's like know. level four. See, you guys, <laughs> you guys didn't even know you're going to get marriage advice on this podcast. So exactly. there you go. Exactly. We're just going so deep. Okay. Well, that's great. So I have to ask this question before yep. Lynn gets into it right yes, now because is... we got to stay consistent. Yep. You've had two babies. You've gained 70 pounds two times, which is one more than I've gained 70 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that's a compare stories. Yeah. Yours was, you know, you had a baby. I had a food uh-huh. baby. Um <laughs> First of all, let me ask you this. Do you guys plan on having another child? <laughs> That's that a hard question. Personal? No, it's not too personal. Okay. Um, and I've been very open about this on our blog. We had an um, ectopic pregnancy a couple months ago. So that's where we were trying to have a third baby and the baby implanted on the wrong part mm-hmm. and not my uterus. And so had to have surgery. So that was a really traumatic experience. Uh-huh. And it's weird because at the time... I really like 100% felt like it was the right time to have another baby. And I don't know if I feel that now. So uh-huh. um, the answer to answer your question is that I'm not totally ruling it out, but we did just move to Idaho and we sold every single baby item we had. So there's okay. that. <laughs> would, okay. Then would you ever do a 55 to fit journey on purpose? Uh, you purposely gain 75 pounds or not for the 75 pounds, but yeah. a lot of weight. Would you ever do it to gain a different understanding or do you think being pregnant, you have a better understanding, better in- empathy, 
than your average yeah. fitness trainer. Well, that, okay, so there's two questions okay, there. Yes, so there first, are. I would say yes, and the reason I wow, say that you're is, the first one. yeah, I and know she's the first one to say yes. But I okay, actually sign her up. Is, okay. Sign I'm her telling up. you right now, we already knew that Natalie was my soulmate, <laughs> and this has just reaffirmed it. So you, so you guys are gonna do it together? You yeah, I, I, I would totally, honestly. Okay. I would do it if you if you told me that Natalie and I can move in together and be BFFs <laughs> and eat donuts all day along with good food. And hang out all For day six long. Months. I sign me up. Yeah, okay. I would totally. No, and the reason I know that is because I had seriously considered um, being a part of your guys's fit to fat to fit uh, TV show. That's that will be coming out soon. And so um, I uh, I had considered doing that, and I was at a point where I said, "Okay, I think that I would do this." And um, so yeah, I think it would be really fun <laughs> to like eat a whole bunch of food. That tasted awesome for a second. <laughs> but then the second I question was, you. do you think you gained a better understanding being pregnant? Yeah. Do you think you better relate to people who are overweight? Or um, do you I, think I doing think a that, fit fit journey would give you better I think that it does and it doesn't. So I think okay. that it, I think that a lot of people say, well, pregnancy weight doesn't count. Okay. Which is, is true in some regards because part of it is a baby, right? And you lose that when you give birth to a baby. But the other... 50 pounds really is just extra body fat I had. I mean, if you look at my pictures, I had 50 pounds of extra body fat on my body. Um, but it is different. I will absolutely say that it is different um, than, you know, gaining the weight because of eating habits or because of, you know, a lifestyle, you know, a lifetime of eating bad and never exercising. I mean, that is, that is very different. So um, I do think that my own experience definitely gives me empathy for people that have a lot of weight to lose because I understand the feeling of helplessness of, oh my gosh, I have so much to lose. I don't even know where to start of feeling embarrassed being in gym. I mean, all those things I can certainly relate to. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, hey, Natalie, you're so <laughs> dang inspiring. Oh gosh. Okay. No. She's like my favorite. All right, you guys, we are going into my favorite part of the entire <laughs> show, which is called the lightning I'm like, round. I, I can't see she's, I know, she, she's I know. nervous. She's I know. Nervous. I always get nervous. Well, because, you, you know why? Because I love the lightning round. Like, I've listened to every single one of your podcasts, and the lightning round is my favorite <laughs> because I, like, want to know what people are going to say. Mess up. I know. I know. I'll and probably say dumb things. Know, I basically am going to spout out random questions. Natalie has no idea what they are. They really do have no real purpose or meaning behind health and nutrition. They're just things that I'm curious about. And she only has a few seconds to respond and answer as quickly as possible. Are you ready? Yes. Natalie, what is your most embarrassing moment? Oh, I can't tell this. You have, you to. have to. You, have to. Oh, yeah, you can do it. It's a lightning round. <laughs> right away, whatever just popped into your head, you got to say it. I cannot tell you the story. To. Okay, I just talked about owning my Own story. It. Oh, oh right. my gosh. Okay, I told you I used to be... Look, you guys, my face is bright red. red. I love this. You guys um, can see this. I used to be a marathon runner. And one time I was out on the long run and I'm just going to say I pooped in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like four miles from home and I could, I was on a busy like neighborhood and I, there was nowhere to stop and I could not hold it in. And it was like, <laughs> every step was like, <laughs> 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 road rash from like that <laughs> stuff sitting on my skin and like rubbing in my cheeks back and forth and I literally like ran Whoa. inside and bawled for like two hours because I was so ashamed of myself and I cannot believe I just told the whole world that um, story. I literally do not think I could love Natalie. I love you totally different I love now. Her. I love you totally different now. Oh so Drew when you posted that <laughs> Natalie, picture I wanted to tell you that story so bad and I was too embarrassed. Too. Natalie everyone poops their pants at some point. Okay, sometimes it's just when we're younger. Just not always while running. But just at some point. Oh, please. I love you. Next God. question. We still love we're you. Going answer, on. We're moving on. You forward. answered that question. That is the best answer, that that is the best answer we've ever had. We'll Honestly, see if someone can beat that. I could that. stop like right that. here and, and it'd be fine. That was like 30 years ago, by the way. No, just joking. That wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Last year. Um, I love Nick. <laughs> Next question. Your favorite TV show? Oh, that's easy. The Bachelor. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Your... So, your secret crush. Oh, that's easy too. Channing Tatum. <laughs> Hello. I love 
like so oh, gosh, right? I know. Did you oh, see Magic Mike? Like, my husband even knows, like, I'm obsessed with but him. But did you see Magic Mike? Oh, on opening oh. night in the movie theater okay. with my girlfriend. Oh, oh my gosh, and, me too. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're, like, the All same right. person. <laughs> We're basically, we are twins. Yeah. Okay, except I don't have ads. Oh, last question. But you have a good bet. So. La- I do have a pretty good bet. <laughs> okay, last question. Your favorite dessert, just because I always want to know. Um... Mm, that's so hard. Honestly, I don't know if people would consider this a dessert, but probably donuts. I love um, donuts. Soul like, Sister, totally a dessert. There, I just recently discovered bacon covered maple donuts, and I eat them way more than I should. So oh, we've yeah. been eating those together here. We have. So them. I just totally support you in this. Okay, last question. Okay. Do you ever feel pressure out in public to eat a certain way? Because now that you have a fitness following, mm-hmm. do you ever feel that pressure? You know, and I you can, own it, or sometimes are you like, I, I know, I always eat kale <laughs> salad with yeah. Brussels sprouts. You know, at the beginning I did because I felt this need to be perfect and this all or nothing personality, and now I am so vocal and open about about having balance in your life. And I share photos photos all the time of like my treat meals, and I talk so much about not being strict all the time and having balance and moderation that it doesn't bother me. And I think it's good for people to see like, oh wow, this really fit, healthy girl can still have balance and moderation in her life and eat pizza with her kids or can go out for ice cream after a basketball game or yeah. you know whatever. And so, no, I don't really. Cool. Yeah, I love I that. Say. Okay, well thank you so much for joining us today, Natalie. Where can yeah. people find you at? Uh, my website, it's just my name, www.nataliehodson.com. I love connecting with you guys on Instagram and on Facebook as well. And Snapchat. isn't it at Natalie Hodson one? It is. Yeah. Apparently Natalie Hodson was taken. So it's at <laughs> Natalie Hodson one. Yeah. You mentioned Snapchat, my new favorite social media. I love Snapchat. It's that same handle. And then, um, Facebook is Facebook. Uh, dot com slash Natalie Hudson official. Okay. So. Awesome. And just so you guys know, all of that will be in the show notes so that yep. you know where to find and follow Natalie. Yep. Yep. Hopefully that <laughs> that <laughs> we're not talking about the story. We're not talking about that. Again. Oh. Okay. Let's ignore Drew. Okay. That I'm, just saying, we, I'm just saying. I'm saying. Let's finish this up on a happy note. Okay. Happy note. Okay, I'm just saying, Sports Center has a top 10. So far, that's the top. <laughs> if anyone can beat that, they'll get a prize. Okay. okay. I'll we, finish on a happy we're, note. We're just finishing Should've on the happy note. We love Natalie. She is so inspiring. This mama, if you follow her, seriously will give you some of the best health and fitness tips, especially in keeping you and your family and your kids healthy and happy. And we're just glad we had you on. Thank, Thank you. you so much, I love Natalie. you guys. And the feeling is so mutual. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes and please subscribe to our podcast if you enjoy it. Yeah. And don't forget to leave comments, you guys. We love to hear what you thought about the podcast. Let us know if there's any questions that you want us to ask the next person we have on the show or if you have any other health and fitness questions. We go through each of them when we have the time and we always try to get back to you. Yeah. But don't forget to stay in touch with us on social media. For me, at fit to fat to fit on all social media handles. And mine is at to fit at home. Yep, and you can also sign up for our newsletter on my website is fit to fat to fit dot com. And mine is to fit at home dot com. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys back here next week with another amazing episode. Next Tuesday.